Despite COVID-19 and of course not being able to meet face to face, um, we have moved uh, the interactions to the internet, of course, where the uh, enthusiasm and the commitment uh, is uh, maybe more contagious than the virus that actually is out there. And uh, I can safely say that it actually has spread this enthusiasm uh, because now we also have two new partners joining the consortium, uh, partners that have been unanimously been accepted by the General Assembly, and that is Pfizer and Maccabi. So we're really happy to have them on board. Um, and I can also say that maybe the um, cautious optimism uh, has also motivated us to start planning for a face-to-face -face meeting, maybe in autumn, so we can actually have the uh, all our partners coming together in, in Denmark. But uh, time will tell whether that's going to be feasible. And until then, we'll just continue these um, interactions on the digital platforms. In this last half year of the project, uh, we have aimed at uh, um, starting to collect information on uh, on uh, what parts of the data sets uh, can be harmonized, uh, what makes sense. Um, we have achieved this. Uh, we have also aimed at uh, uh, getting a, a head start on uh, building a federated data set and our partners in, um, in Switzerland and the uh, SIB are uh, on a good track at achieving this in, for the, in the next half year. And uh, at Novo Nordisk and at uh, other uh, partner institutes, uh, we have also started to harmonize our data sets to the um, common format uh, that is necessary, that, um, that all partners are able to run the same uh, programs and uh, retrieving uh, the same data sets and uh, same records uh, with um, high reliability. Most of the work that we've been doing in Work Package 3 to date has really revolved around the organization of the working groups. Uh, we've placed special emphasis on the obesity surgery cohorts, um, but also uh, the federation of data from the large epidemiological cohorts. We've also engaged in cross work package discussions to try to make sure that the analyses that we'll be doing in Work Package 3 are complementary of those in other work packages. Uh, added to this, we have a few papers underway, so we're making good progress. My name is Jonathan Rosen, and I'm a scientist at JDRF, formerly the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. We are co-leading SOFIA Work Package 4, investigating the interplay between obesity and type 1 diabetes. We're working to unravel how obesity affects progression to type 1 diabetes and type 1 diabetes outcomes, such as blood glucose levels and long-term diabetic complications. Additionally, we're investigating how T1D affects obesity outcomes in people with both conditions. Our approach is to bring data from people with type 1 and or obesity from around the world into our collaborative effort. So far, we've focused on identifying the patient data sets that'll help us answer our questions, bringing them into our collaboration, and starting to work with and analyze the data, which cover tens of thousands of people. We have built networks within our work package and between ours and other SOFIA work packages and have spoken to patient organizations about type 1 diabetes and obesity. In addition to answering critical research questions, we also want to educate the world about type 1 diabetes and obesity. Contrary to wide-held misconceptions, people with type 1 diabetes live with obesity at a rate comparable to non-diabetic people, and we need better treatments to address these conditions. The work being done in SOFIA will help make this vision a reality. So, in Work Package 5, um, we've used much of the last year to really get together all of our analysts and start bringing together um, the patient level data that we're going to be working on. And we have large cohorts available to us, um, so we can analyze now in excess of 800,000 people with type 2 diabetes, or at least the data from 800,000 people with type 2 diabetes. And we've started on some initial analyses, so one of the first things we want to look at is in relation to adiposity and fatty liver and the link between adiposity fatty liver and cancer risk in patients with type 2 diabetes. We're also starting to explore how diabetes drugs vary in how they put on weight or cause weight loss and why some people lose more weight with some drugs compared to other people um, and we will be moving towards looking at how the genetics impacts on that as well. So, um, and the final area of activities in relation to weight reduction surgery 
um, and we're looking at why some people lose weight and some people don't lose weight or so much weight after weight reduction surgery and trying to understand more around whether or not we can predict ahead of surgery who are the people who gain and lose weight. As we all know, obesity is a chronic disease. And for the past years, we have seen an increase in the number of people suffering from obesity. The SOFIA project was initiated to, to increase the knowledge of SOFIA. In work week is three, four, and five. Our hope is to find predictors that may guide different types of treatment, but maybe also predictors of obesity complications and disease progression. And the key purpose of Work Packet 6 is to replicate findings from Work Packets 3 to 5 and trying to validate them in a meaningful clinical setting. But since we're still in the beginning of the SOFIA project and the primary analyses have not, not yet been conducted, our priority in Work Packet 6 right now has been to interact and trying to help in alignment of the early phase uh, and analytical work ongoing in the early work packages. Furthermore, in the work package six, we are right now trying to ensure that we have all the study populations aligned and we have the maps and we try to clean them. And we also try to understand the usefulness of the study populations. So we will be ready when the validation will start in a few years. Furthermore, we can also see in Work Packet 6, which also is very good, that new collaborators are contacting us in the SOFIA project. And we are, of course, also investigating whether we can incorporate that data to further strengthen our replication pipeline. So to sum up, for Work Packet 6, we are preparing ourselves for the finding that's going to be or come from the early web Work Packages 3, 4, and 5. And we will try to ensure that we provide a rapid translation and validation of the key finding from these work packages. Hi there, my name is Dr. Georgia McGillicuddy and I co-lead Work Package 7 with Joe Naglowski from Obesity Action Coalition. There are three strands to the work package that we are currently working on. The first is a state-of-the-art literature review. In order to undertake the literature review, we decided to develop a systematic protocol to ensure we took a systematic approach to identifying the literature for the review. We started with 16,000 papers and we have used the protocol to identify the 30 most relevant papers capturing patient voice. And again, patient voice for us is the most important aspect of the work we are doing in Work Package 7. We are currently initiating a qualitative synthesis of these 30 papers in order to identify core themes. And once we've identified those, theme, those themes, then we are going to write up the review under each one. The second aspect of Work Package 7 involves uh, an ethnography or a social media listening study, which was led by Nova Nordisk. The idea around this was to identify the narrative online around living with obesity with specific focus on the diagnosis and treatment for obesity using key terms which we searched across the internet. There is more information about the findings from this study available uh, in, in the form of a report and also in the form of a recording from the launch which we held in early December. So please have a look at those for further information. However, there was one key finding that we really um, wanted to identify today and share with you, and it's around the gap in terms of diagnosis that across the internet and across the forums, there was no mention of um, participants or people experiencing an official diagnosis of obesity from healthcare professionals. In fact, most of the people online uh, indicated that they engaged in a form of self-diagnosis and were using the internet and searches to find information around the best treatment for them. 
So for us, what that indicates is that there is a gap in the patient's journey. And I think this is something we really need to bear in mind across all work packages in SOFIA and how to improve this gap in terms of patient journey. The third strand of the work we're doing, and we're very excited to be initiating, is our qualitative data collection. We are currently initiating recruitment into the study um, and identifying participants. And we are going to apply two core methods in our qualitative study in this first phase. The first involves an in-depth approach to capturing patients' life course journey and life course history using an in-depth interview with participants. And the second methodology that we are going to uh, apply is a visual methodology using photo voice where we're going to invite participants to share their fears and concerns around living with obesity, as well as their hopes and desires for treatment using photography. We are hoping to initiate this in the coming weeks and we're very excited about it. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the theme, team on Work Package 7. Um, and I'd also like to thank the patient advisory board across SOFIA and our own internal patient advisory board who have been really important to us in terms of helping to shape the work we're doing within the work package and helping us to pilot some of the research instruments. So thank you very much and I look forward to updating you again shortly um, on our progress. So work package eight is about establishing shared value. And to do that, we needed to do a couple of things. Um, we, need a, we need to have a common understanding of the terminology that we use, both when we say shared value, but also when we speak about obesity, its cost, its, its treatment and complication. We also needed a strong team. And um, we need to understand who are the people, the stakeholders that we're trying to reach with Sophia, who are the people who can help us um, establish shared value and get better treatment for obesity. So, to address those points, uh, during these first few months, we've done a few things. Um, to have a strong team, we established a task force with fantastic partners from across uh, the SOFIA partnership. To, uh, to have a common understanding of the terminology, uh, we had these uh, kickoff working sessions with our task force, but we've also conducted a one voice vocabulary academic exercise to establish consensus on the words we use when we speak about obesity. And lastly, we have initiated our stakeholder mapping, which forms the basis of our stakeholder needs and challenges assessment, which will take place over the coming months. So all in all, I think we're off to a pretty good start in Work Package 8. Mm -hmm.